tonight from Sharp Gymnasium on the campus of Houston Baptist University in Houston, Texas. We've got HBU Husky Basketball on FoxSportsHouston.com. And the HBU Huskies take on the Campbell University Camels out of Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Campbell coming in tonight with an 8-1 record. And the Huskies of HBU coming in with the 3-6 record overall to start the young season. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the broadcast tonight. I'm Lonnie King, and alongside Kurt Lowe tonight, we're going to bring you all the action. And this should be an interesting one, Kurt. They, the Huskies started out their season on the road in North Carolina against the same Campbell team. Very rare that you get a non-conference home-and-home in a season. Sure. But uh, the Huskies have that tonight and a chance to avenge an early season loss. Yeah, Phil, Phil that game 82-68. to 68, um, A lot of outside shooting that day. You, you definitely want to stop that. And, and a little bit out rebound that game as well. So some things to work on tonight. Get a chance, you're right, in a non-conference home at home, get a chance to uh, uh, make up for some lost ground there that first game. Yeah, the Huskies fell behind early in that game and really were helped when uh, Ronald March came off the bench and got them back into the thick of the contest with a couple of three-pointers in the second half, but they fell short uh, at, on the home floor of Campbell in that contest, and as Kirk said, uh, the outside shooting was a problem, and uh, Coach Cottrell knows that they've got to guard against that tonight. <laughs> Absolutely, and not only the outside shoot, as we talk about the rebounding, you have that outside shoot, you're going to have those long rebounds, and so even if you're getting the position inside, you've got to worry about those guards getting the ball back which they did. Two guys over 20 points last game for Campbell, and I know that's definitely on, on the HBU's mind this evening. It's a little bit different uh, team tonight for Coach Cottrell than he had in that opener of the season. Uh, freshman uh, Dustin Hobal from Clear Creek High School had a big game, 17 points off the bench for the Huskies in that opener. He's out with a broken hand right now, but Art Bernardi is back for this Huskies team, and in his first three games, he's really contributed well. Yeah, coming off 16 points a game, that, that's a good way to say he's contributing a lot for sure. He's one of their leading scorers right now. Came off the bench the first game, started the last two, and uh, as far as we know, we'll see him in that starting lineup this evening. So yeah, um, losing Hobart hurts, but having Bernardi definitely picks him up. So uh, Bernardi is back, and uh, Joe Lattice, the big uh, senior who plays in the middle, again, will have a bit of a size advantage now. The Huskies have a size advantage in the middle with Lattice, but uh, overall, it looks like across the line, Campbell may have an overall size advantage, and that's something that the Huskies will have to figure out a way to get around tonight. Yeah, well, one of the leaders of Campbell is six foot eight senior forward Eric Griffin, comes in 32nd in the in the whole nation in block shots, almost three blocks a game. So that's something we have to deal with. And then on the outside, they also have, of course, Darren White, 10th in the nation in scoring right now, not just in the Big South Conference, leads the Big South Conference, 10th in the nation, averaging 22 points per game. So this is a team that can put it up as well as as well as well banging inside if they need to. Both these teams come into tonight off of big wins uh, here at home on the 10th last weekend. Uh, the Huskies defeated Dallas Christian 112-80. to That broke a three-game losing streak and a nice uh, big win over Dallas Christian to kind of get untracked for Coach Cottrell in that game. And uh, the Campbell Camels come in uh, to start a five-game road trip tonight here, and they're coming off a big win as well over Methodist. 103-55 to was their score, and this is a team that uh, can put up some points on the board, so that will be a challenge for Houston Baptist tonight. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups for you and then all the action from the opening tip to the final buzzer when we return right here on FoxSportsHouston.com. Basketball, Willie wants the batting cages. My husband's into football, and I'm training for a marathon. Then we found the sports house, and now I'm one happy mom. With single and family options available, we found the membership just right for us. The Sports House offers a range of activities with group and private lessons overseen by pro and collegiate athletes. The Sports House even has a party room and offers an additional 25% off on Sunday. Check them out at thesportshouse.net. Dream big, play hard, train smart. Okay, do you see my location on your phone, son? Yeah. Uh, your old man's kind of in a jam. Yeah, yeah. 
I owe you big time. Yeah, you do. By the way, don't tell your mom. Ugh, we'll see. Okay, now look up. <laughs> Dad, how did you even get... Son? No, 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 no. Get the latest 4G phones with family tracking apps for Christmas, starting at 2888. Save money, live better. Walmart. Remember when I got my first Texans football? <laughs> then, of course, I had to have my own Texans jersey. Well, nothing beats this year when I got my own Texans checking account. Now, it's my turn. I got this one, Dad. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. Your choice of designs, plus chances to win great prizes, trips, and game day tickets for all Texans checking account holders. You think these make me look taller? Game day every day. Carry the Texans in your wallet. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. TexansChecking.com. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Okay, I'll admit it. I'm a huge fan of chocolate. I could go for some caramel, too. Together, that's a win-win. The McCafe Caramel Mocha, a combination of chocolate and caramel with a touch of espresso. The simple joy of a perfect union. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center, where a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Back at Sharp Gym, just ahead of tonight's opening tip-off here on the campus of Houston Baptist University. Lonnie King and Kirk Lowe with you. Happy to be along for the ride tonight. Holiday season here on the campus as uh, classes are out at HBU and a lot of uh, the on-campus housing is cleared out. But, Kirk, we expect a pretty good crowd here tonight. It should be a lot of fun for us either way. Hey, you're right. Something to do during the holidays. These students have worked hard. It's final exam time. Relax. Come out and watch a good basketball game this evening. Well, the starting lineups are being introduced on the floor here. Let's take a look to in, uh, for a minute to introduce them to you. Here are the starters for the Campbell Camels. Trey Freeman, Rico Ferguson, Darren White starts along the front line. He'll be joined by Marvell Harris, a 6'6 forward. And Antonio Kalpik was originally in the starting lineup. We understand that he's a late scratch and will be replaced by Eric Griffin. Griffin, you talked about uh, our, our check it. Uh, well, there are some of the subs that will come in for head coach Robbie Lang in his ninth season. But Eric Griffin will be in the, the starting lineup tonight. You talked about his contributions and his scoring average uh, for this team. So it'll be interesting to see him uh, right off the bat tonight getting uh, a start for Campbell. They'll be going up against this lineup from HBU. There's Art Bernardi back in the lineup. 6-9, good outside shooting touch. Marcus Davis joins him along with Joe Lattice in the center, the big 6-11 center. Marcel Smith in the backcourt will start at the point, and Tyler Russell joins him along the back line and the starting lineup for Ron Cottrell, who is looking for win number 400 in his career tonight. And this would be great to be able to get it in front of the home crowd, it would be a nice little Christmas present for the coach. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you can sit here and look at this gym and all the banners and all the great accomplishments that this coach has done for this school, which is why they're not only where they are right now in Division One basketball, but, of course, two years away from going to a Southland Conference. Uh, he's, he's built this program from day one, and, and 400 wins would be quite the treat. It would be a great uh, opportunity to see that happen here tonight for this crowd. 
Current record for Coach Cottrell in his 21st season here at HBU is 399 and 260. We're ready to go. The tip is is misfired, <laughs> and we'll do it all again. Bad toss. Here we go. And the tip is controlled by Campbell in the road blacks tonight with the white numerals and orange trim. And we're underway. Glad you're along for the ride tonight. With the basketball is Trey Freeman out top. He'll leave it on the right wing for Ferguson out high. They go in the corner to Marvell Harris. His jumper is short. And the first rebound of the ball game belongs to the Huskies. Quickly up the floor and it's going to be out of bounds. Just stepping on the sideline was Tyler Russell. Like we thought about long rebounds. You know, that's the outside shot, long rebounds, something they wanted to work on. They definitely do that possession number one. Freeman will bring it back up for the Campbells, who come in at 8-1 and one out of the Big South Conference into tonight's contest here at Sharp Gym. Swinging around the arc now, cross-court pass is tipped and intercepted by the Huskies. Back the other way comes Marcel Smith. Down low, Lattice feeds nice Davis underneath, and he pretty lays pass. it off the glass. Big fella, pretty pass right there. You know, for his size, he's nimble and got good pass motion there. Pretty job. Assist to Lattice, Davis with the basket, and it's two to nothing Huskies. First minute of play here at Sharp. Good rotation on that double. Down low, turnaround in the paint by Griffin, and he tries to put it up, gets his own board, puts it up again, and there's the whistle. Well, last game Griffin against, uh, last game against HBU, Griffin scores 21. He's one of those guys that was over 20, so you definitely expect to see them keep feeding him the ball. He'll go to the line here, first foul of the ball game, and it is charged to big Joe Lattice. Griffin averaging almost a double-double, 18 points a game and almost nine rebounds a contest. First free throw is long, though. It'll get one more to come. Again, Lattice, great job for the big man. It's, you know, it, 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 you may not do justice by watching on the video. He's 6'11". He's all a 6'11". Yeah. But very good job of that big man. One out of two at the line for Griffin that time, and it's two to one as the Huskies come up the floor. There you see Art Bernardi, number four, has the basketball out top. They'll look to him tonight. This one's going to go oh. off the floor, and they're going to say it was tipped by Trey Freeman. So stays in possessions of the possession of the Huskies. Smith brings it back across. They want to go inside the lattice. Yeah. Nothing opened up. Didn't quite have the position they wanted. Shot clock down to five. Davis puts up a long range jumper, rolls off, and the rebound comes off to Marvell Harris. Harris up ahead, he goes to Freeman, tries to take it through traffic, and there's a whistle. This is going to be called on Marcel Smith, his first and the team's second. Yeah, good rebound that time. We're talking about Marvell Harris, young sophomore, 6'6, six, six, averaging more rebounds than he gets points per game. That's his job, and he did it right there. Looked like Davis reached in on that rebound, but they got the call on Smith inside. Right. That was a missed shot, and it goes out of bounds, and it's going to be off of one of the Huskies, and it'll stay in possession of the Camels. Campbell University off to its best start since it went Division I back in the 1970s. Here's a jump shot from the baseline, won't go. Rebound control by Campbell. Out to Freeman from the wing, he nails a three. Well, we mentioned Griffin earlier with the 21. Freeman was the other one with 22 last time. So again, HBU knows all about these young men. That's the outside shooting we're talking about. Give and go from Bernardi to Davis. Back to Bernardi, he's gonna pull up and pop and a nice stroke from the wing gets it to go. And HBU recaptures the lead. Our check it ties it up at four piece. Long range jumper. This one rolls off and the rebound pulled down by Russell. Russell on the move. He'll pull up and pop and the rebound goes right over Big Joe's head and back up the other way comes Campbell. Three on one break and the layup and in for Freeman gets it to go. Yeah, nice job that time. Nice three on one. Lattice is up ahead. He'll slow it down, turn around, 
in the low blocks, puts it up, going to follow, gets his own shot, waits on the defender to get off the ground, and he will draw the foul. That's going to go against Griffin. Yeah, that was all lads. You see him here, makes a nice move inside. Not only that, gets his own rebound and forces Campbell into that little foul right there. The way to stop him is to not make sure he doesn't have the ball. And once he gets it, it's going to be tough to stop. Goes to the line, has a pretty good touch from the charity stripe and hits the first one. One more free throw to come. Smith's going to check out and checking in. Jonathan Evans. Evans out of Bel Air High School here in the Houston area. Had his second free throw, rolls out, won't go down. 6 5 is our score. Up the floor in a hurry. Here comes Campbell. Low blocks to Griffin. He backs it down and lays it off the glass. Yeah. And Evans. Nice and easy. 8-5 score. Evans is going to pop from three-point land. Rolls off. Lattice fights. But he's outnumbered 2-1. to one, And the rebound controlled by Griffin. Campbell back up the floor. Freeman. Spin move up top. Leaves it outside for Horton, who's checked in. He's a young man from the Houston area. And the rebound comes off to Lattice. Talk about Anthony Horton here in a minute. Bernardi, left side down low, puts up the jumper, and again with a smooth touch. Yeah, again, they missed him those first few games of the season, but already nice touch right there on Anthony Horton, as you mentioned a second ago here, from Clear Springs High School here in the Houston area. It's nearly a steal by Bernardi, but Griffin's going to control. In the backcourt, he gets it back up to Freeman. Dribbles down left side. Kicks it back out. Almost stolen, and nice it job. is stolen away by Davis, but controlled by Campbell. They had the numbers here. Griffin going to put up the jumper off glass. A rebound off to Campbell. Won't go, and Bernardi pulls down the board. Evans on the run. He tries to go to Davis. Almost lost control, but saves it on the sideline. Inside down low to Lattice, and he will lose it out of bounds. And that will bring us to our first timeout of the game. 15.08 to go here in the first half. And our score is Campbell 8, HBU 7. Back with more in a moment. You're watching it all on FoxSportsHouston.com. cell phones on the honeymoon. Go just check this text. Oh, no. What's the matter? McRib is back. I'm going to miss it. I married a 14-year-old. McRib's saucy goodness is back for a limited time. The simple joy of big news. To this one here in the first half of action here at Sharp Gym. And one thing jumps off the stat sheet real quick at you is second chance points here early on. Four of the eight that Campbell has put in the bucket here early on have come on second chance. Yeah, and as we talked about the pregame, that's one thing that HBU really wanted to, to work on coming to this ballgame. That was a big difference in game one. And already, as you said, uh, a quick advantage here for the Campbells. Campbell has eight rebounds to HBU six here, so no big advantage there, but they've done a little more. HBU with just one point. Right, Calpix just checks in for the game for the Campbells. Usual starter. And there's a tipped pass, and that's going to be off of Campbell. It's going to go over to HBU, so an opportunity now for the Huskies to grab the lead here on this possession. Anthony Hill is checked in. He gets it into Evans. Evans feeds Davis. Davis out top. He's picked up out there by Darren White. Evans to Hill. Find Bernardi. 
Also checked in for the Huskies as Hill puts up a jumper from the wing and they say that's a two so put on the line and it's 9-8 the Huskies recapture the lead. Lamar Thomas is checked in for HBU down low to give Lattis a breather. They try to go inside on him and Thomas gets him with the body but they're going to call it a jump ball. Yeah Thomas a lot of experience here for HBU one of the only guys on the team to play every game last season. Big body young man right there and great job of getting that ball tied up. Possession arrow belongs to the Huskies, and so they'll bring it up the floor. Evans and Bernardi across the timeline. One point lead here for the Huskies on the home floor. We got Bernardi on the pick and roll, didn't see him. Back out top, Evans gonna take it to the hole, off the glass, too strong. Bernardi grabs the board though, in traffic. Three men surrounding him, so he has to dribble out. Cross course he feeds. Evans, who's open for three, and it's good. Yeah, good ball at that time. It's by Barardi. Good hustle. But Evans just kills that shot. Pretty stroke. And Coach Robbie Lang of Campbell wants a short timeout here. Doesn't like the way that one developed. And so with 13.54 to go, he takes a quick timeout. And it uh, gives us a chance to... Thank you again for being here watching HBU basketball tonight on FoxSportsHouston.com. 12 to 8 is our score here, and now a four point lead for the Huskies. A nice little cushion early on here. Yeah, well, I'm sure the coach called a timeout. Man, he just flat out got a hustle that time. Brought did a good job. Triple team down low, allowed him to get out of that trap, and they let off enough where he got a chance to see the easy cross court pass for the nice three. So, yeah, no doubt that was all hustle by HBU that time. And that usually brings up a timeout from at any level. <laughs> Spoken like a true coach. Huskies back out on the floor. Thomas, Bernardi, Hill, Evans, and now Ronald March has checked in as well. So March, as we told you, had some big buckets off the bench in the opener against Campbell, and he's checked in for the first time, and there is a Wrap around, it looks like. Did he step out or did he foul? They're going to oh, call him for a foul. They sure are. They call a little hook right there. Tough call right there, but Huskies will take it. Foul is charged to Lauren Murphy, his senior guard, 6'2". He's checked in. So HBU basketball, and Evans has it. Right side, down low, he goes to Hill. Bounce pass in the low blocks to Thomas. Backs it down, turn around with the hook shot, won't go with the left hand, and the rebound is controlled by Kyle Pick. Oh, had Kyle Pick that time, didn't he? A couple times with pick and rolls, both teams missed the big man. Out top, White has it, tries a bounce pass down low, and it's going to be out of bounds and knocked out by Anthony Hill, trying to save it on the baseline. He could not. Andrew Ryan's going to check in for Campbell, and also checking in is Terry Bembry for the Huskies. Yeah, good hustle by Hill. Really had no chance to get that ball. But as a coach, you like to see that. You know you're not going to get it, but go down the floor anyway. Campbell basketball on the baseline. Inbounds pass is tipped. They're packing that 2-3 zone in on the inbounds here, and there's a couple of guys who coach the trust to get out here on. Be aware of those shooters in the corner. Mm. Out top they go to Freeman. They get it in and he saves it out high. Gets it over to Ryan. Ryan back to Freeman for three and he hits from the wing. A tough shot in hand in his face that time. Davis down low to Bembry. Backs it down. Turn around with the right hand and gets it up and in. So Bembry with his first bucket of the night. Yeah, nice job on the post. Quickly, Freeman tried to put up a runner. Won't go in. The board pulled down by Evans. Leaves it out on the wing for March for three. Too strong. Rolls off and the rebound taken by Trey Freeman. And there's a whistle. And we've got a foul called on Jonathan Evans. Yeah, th that was a good shot that time by the Huskies. I mean, obviously in transition, had a good look. Guys are hot. Keep shooting the basketball right there. I'm not sure what they call the foul on him on that, but we'll 
<laughs> take their word that it was a foul. Running too close. Yeah. <laughs> Amir Celestine is checked in for Campbell. He's dribbling the basketball, number two, if you're watching. And Ryan out on the right wing, gets it around the arc, winds up in Darren White's hand, and he's called for the walk. <laughs> and does not agree at all with that call, but saying got a little extra push right there, but good call. He definitely shuffled the feet on that one. Husky basketball after the turnover, 12-13 to go here in the first half. Evans staying out there, working the point. Gets it to Davis. March, left side, looks for help. They go down low to Bembry. Bembry tried to find Davis in the back, but he had it tipped away instead, and now here's a whistle, and we're going to have another foul called on Anthony Hill, his first personal and that's going to take us to a timeout. So a timeout on the floor with 11.54 to go. The Huskies with a three-point lead, 14 to 11. You're watching it on FoxSportsHouston.com. Come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting, so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, we'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. HBU has returned to NCAA Division I Athletics. Come and enjoy the most intimate setting of all of Division I. HBU Athletics is also the most affordable entertainment option in Houston. The HBU Huskies, a member of the Great West Conference, experience success on the field with conference championships in women's soccer, women's golf, and softball. With great recruiting classes and men's and women's basketball and baseball, HBU Athletics is on the move and on the way up. For more information on HBU opportunities in the classroom and on the field, visit us on the web, hbuhuskies.com. And we are on the campus of HBU tonight. Lonnie King along with Kirk Lowe, and glad you're along for the ride as well. Kirk, during that timeout, a number jumped out at you. A couple of numbers actually jumped out at you. Well, the, biggest, yeah, the biggest one starting line is, is points on turnover, seven now for HBU. And we also mentioned, though, the fact that the outside shooting for both teams right now is just it, – it's, it's not where we thought it might be coming into this ball game. But HBU doing a great job of getting the ball inside. Freeman brings it up for the Camels, leaves it out high for White. He puts up a long-distance jumper off the iron in the rebound. Controlled another one of those long rebounds pulled down by the Huskies. Marcel Smith has checked back in. Here's a give and go on the baseline nice. from Bembry to March, and he lays it up and in. That's just the way you that's the way you do it when you're a kid right here. Got there, nice little back door, pretty job. Way to use his body in there and gets the and one opportunity. And that's gonna bring a quick hook to a play. Because <laughs> again, you cannot lose your man, especially out there on that baseline. March with the and one and gets it to go down through and HBU now has extended the lead out to six points, 17-11 with 11 and a half minutes to go. Now the man up on the defensive side, Hill comes out to find Freeman. Swing it around the arc. Now they go inside down low and that's gonna be a foul. Marvell Harris tried to take it up and he was hammered on the arm going up and so he will go to the line to shoot a pair. Yeah, not a bad foul right there, though. Went up, trying to get the ball. Good job by Harris. He used his body and get a chance to now for the two. Marcus Davis picks up the personal, his first, team's fifth foul. 11-13 to go here in the first half. That one is no good. One more to come. HBU needs to continue to find a way to get that ball inside, and then when they get that double down, try to kick it out for the outside shot. That's what's been open tonight. Makes that second one, and 17-12 now, Huskies. So one out of two at the line, and 
Smith brings it back up for HBU. Finds Hill out on the wing. He'll dribble back across. Mark and low to Davis. Davis dribbles down and has it stripped and stolen away. Uh, didn't need to force that one. White almost traveled, gets it off to Harris instead. Puts it up, nice touch from about six feet. He gets it to go down through. And Anthony Hill steps on the line. That's going to give it right back over to Campbell. So a couple of quick turnovers here by HBU, and now they're giving Campbell an opportunity to draw closer or maybe tie this one up, and Lattice is going to check back in. Just over 10 and a half to go here in the first half and into the backcourt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of those things where you, your eyes almost don't believe what you're seeing, but Rico Ferguson thought he was bumped. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see here on the replay. Not only was he bumped, but the ball goes off his knee. So there's really almost a no possession right there. But again, you're going to go with that call, and they, you can argue all you want. I guarantee you they won't change it. <laughs> Bernardi back in is going to get it to Smith, and he'll bring it up. Davis, Lattice, and March complete the five on the floor for Ron Cottrell's Huskies right now. Davis down low into Bernardi. Uh, had it tipped, yeah, but a good look there. Trying to avoid the block. Should have just gone with the shot and got the foul. Davis almost with the steal. Instead is controlled by Harris. Gets it out on the wing to White. He tries to go out high to Murphy on the baseline. Freeman dribbles down, leaves it down low for Griffin, and he gets it to go up and in for two. It's down to a one-point game now, 17-16. Bernardi turn around, a little too strong from the free throw line. I think he was a little more wide open than he thought he would be. Yeah, he was, and Lattice got way too far into the bucket. Here's the jumper from the wing outside the arc, and Murphy can't get it to go. Up the floor in a hurry. Here come the Huskies, and Smith pushes, and it's a blocking foul. The account at the bucket goes in. And they should count that. It was there. They got the block. Whoa. Huh. And yeah, they sorting. did count the bucket. They, they should, well, they should. It went in. <laughs> then they forgot it actually went in. Well, that was a tough blocking foul. We saw he, he comes off the screen, and, and the, the defender was just kind of surprised that he was there that quick. There was really not much he could do. Great job, though, to actually make the bucket. Smith to the line. His first free throw of the night, and it's up, and it is good. In fact, first bucket preceded that, so three points now for Marcel Smith. And the Huskies take the lead back out to four, 20 to 16. Campbell had gotten as close as one just a moment ago. Freeman finds White. White looks for help, wants to go inside to Griffin, and there's going to be a whistle. I think they're going to get Bernardi for reaching in. Oh, yeah, he's trying to stop Griffin before he gets the ball. Because Griffin's done a good job once he's been in the paint here as we watch the replay, you see. Barney just reached over that left shoulder and does get a little bit of a little bit of skin on that one. Ryan down low to Griffin, and he gets it off the glass. He just said, the way to stop Griffin is to get the, don't let him get the ball, which is what Bernardi got the foul on last time. This time Griffin gets it, the two and the opportunity for the, for the end one. So count the bucket, Griffin. We'll pick up the second foul on Lattice with two fouls. They're going to sit him again and bring Thomas back in off the bench. 9.06 to go here in the first half. You don't want Big Joe picking up that third foul here before the half. No, you don't. And the free throw rattles around and goes down through, so it's back down to a one-point game again as Campbell's hanging around here with the Huskies. Pass down low for... Bernardi knocked out of bounds by Harris. Yeah, Bernardi got to hold that man back a little bit longer. Left that left track of the ball a little soon that time. Got it tipped out. And 
inbounds. Bernardi on the baseline, gets it to Thomas, out top to Smith. He looks for help. The baseline, he finds Russell, who's checked back in. He's going to pop, but it's tipped and blocked, and now we've got a foul mm. called on Tyler Russell, and you see that a lot. Real frustration foul right there. Turn it over, try to get it back. You see on the replay here, again, just a little bit of a block. Here we go, try to get it back, and there's just no need for that. So far away from the basket, you, know, you never want to see it there in that backcourt unless it's at the end of the game and you need a foul right there. That's just a giveaway. And uh, to add to the uh, insult over the foul there is the fact that they're in the bonus, and so sure. you send him to the line. Right. Darren White looking for a free throw. Hits the first one to go, so he'll get another. Anthony Horton checked back in for the Camels and the League City product here from Clear Springs High School. Sophomore. And you coached against him in I high did, school. I did, and he <laughs> didn't help us win any games, believe me. <laughs> great young man, great player. Second free throw won't go. We're tied up at 20. Bernardi pulls down the board. Evans. Running the point, out on the left side, looks for a screen. Now he takes it back left, leaves it for Hill. Hill is picked up by Ryan, who checked back in during the timeout. Ooh, dangerous pass right there. Mark saves it to Bernardi. He loses it, but gets it back. Over to Evans, play clock down to eight. And here's a steal on the baseline. And nice stolen save. back by Mark. Save to Evans. March for three. Big time. Well, all <laughs> that was pure hustle right there and gets well deserved. Quick and back. there's Horton there on, he the, on the baseline and gets it to go. You're not going to celebrate too long as this team. 23-22, 7-45 to go here in the first half. Evans out on the wing. Ah. And March tried to feed Bernardi on the baseline just could not make the connection. It goes out of bounds, and we've got a timeout on the floor. HBU still in the lead, but it's been cut to one. 23 to 22 is our score. 7.35 to go in the first half. Take a break and come back from Sharp Jim on FoxSportsHouston.com. Refinery and manufacturing plant ladder way platform and steer opening should always be a priority. That's why Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates, has been supplying safety gates to their industrial clients for more than 45 years. Easy to install and adaptable for mounting on all types of handrails, Fabenco safety gates are the choice of Fortune 500 companies. If you'd like to learn more about Fabenco self-closing safety gates, call today at 713 686 66 or visit their website at safetygate.com. Campbell has gone four of six from the floor since the last time out here in the first half. So they've heated up their shooting percentage from 30.8 uh, all the way up to 42.1, which still doesn't blow you away, Kirk, but... No. 67% uh, on their last six shots from the field. Yeah, de definitely the uh, shooting percentage gone up. The points in the paint, 10 of their 22 for Campbell coming to the paint, 8 of the 23. Big difference for me, I'm seeing HBU 13 points off the bench tonight, Campbell 2. Big difference there. You just got to look at a gentleman who will be our halftime guest, Brad Hovius, who's the executive director of the Husky Club here at HBU is going to come by and join us. And Brad's got some basketball history. You see him in the background there as Ryan takes the inbounds pass. And Campbell brings it up the floor, trailing by one with seven and a half to go here in the first half. Bounce pass almost stolen by Hill, but it's saved by Griffin. He's double teamed and has it tipped and stripped, and Davis comes away with it. Evans in low to Bernardi, a couple of dribbles and down in the blocks. He gets it off the glass and in for two. Very patient player, Bernardi. He, he waits for the, man, the defense to get off a little bit, makes his move. Six points now for the big 6'9 forward from Brazil. There's a pass down low for Griffin in the low blocks. Bernardi has him. 
Tips it away on the rebound, won't go, and it's saved by Evans. And the Huskies come away with a three-point lead in the basketball. All five around the arc. Now a jumper for three from Hill, Anthony Hill. And just like that, one point to six points. Five in the game here in the first half for Hill off the bench. And the Huskies have been getting some contributions from their bench. There's a nice little runner in the paint. That one's put up and in by Freeman, and he's in double figures now with 10. Evans is going to try to answer with the three. Nobody underneath to grab the board, and so Ryan pulls it down for Campbell. Trey Freeman brings it up, dribbles into the paint, gets the body, and we've got a blocking foul on Thomas. Count the bucket as it goes, and Freeman will go to the line. Yeah, Freeman, nice move here, you see here, and it just comes up right there. Uses his body well. Double clutches the shot after the block for the and one. Freeman today from the floor, that's five of six from the floor with a chance now for one more from the free throw line. Already has 12 points. We mentioned the pregame. Last time he was the Husky killer with 22. Already with 12 in the ball game. Ninth team foul on the Huskies. The next one is double bonus the rest of the way. Just under six minutes to go. And the free throw won't go. It's pulled down by Bembry who's checked back in. Bernardi on the baseline, fadeaway goes and count it, and he is fouled. Again, great use of bodies we'll see here on the, on the replay. You know, leaves the floor, has present enough to, to squares his shoulder up, used to foul, and a nice touch for the end one. See Horton coming back in for the, for the Camels. Getting some playing time here in front of the home folks. And I see his, his high school coaches here as well. Coach Chris Johnson in the crowd tonight. There's a shot that rolls off on the free throw attempt. Husky still up by four, 30 to 26 is our score. Horton with the basketball, leads it for Freeman. Back to Horton. Stay outside the arc and man-to-man -man defense by the Huskies. And now there's a whistle away from the ball. And Bernardi may have picked up his second here. We'll see. That is on Bernardi. So that's, you're right, that's going to be two. And Coach needs decision time right here. You don't, like you said earlier with a lot of you don't want to see him pick up that third. And it looks like Ronald March will check back in here. Griffin to the line to shoot free throws. And that is the 10th team foul on the Husky. So he'll have a pair. So Bernardi now with two fouls for HBU, joins Lattice on the bench who's got a pair as well. Bernardi's still talking as he goes to the bench. Oh, yeah. He doesn't think that uh, there was much to that. Oh, all the banging you do in there, they're gonna call a little, little, little love tap on that, but puts him on the bench. Nice touch by Eric Griffin at the line, that trip to the floor. He's now four of five from the free throw line tonight and cuts the lead back down to two with 5.29 to go. 30 to 28, HBU with the lead in the basketball. Griffin also double figures now with 10. So the same two guys from last game. Evans has worked the point a lot here in the first half in relief of Marcel Smith. Gets that one back oh, yeah. inside to Bembry and we'll there's that a goaltending call, count it. And Bembry will get the bucket. Yeah, once it hits that glass, that's, that's all she wrote. We'll see it here on the kiss off the glass, a little slap back, and easy two. Freeman brings it up in a hurry, leaves it out top for Griffin. He looks for help, finds Ferguson. Nice pass. Back in and down on the baseline. White with the dunk. Again, that baseline, you've got to be aware. You've got to have eyes in the back of your head. Oh, Griffin's going to reach in, and that is his second personal. And we see some of the better players in the game not pick up their second foul on what you consider a little bit cheaper one like that. That one definitely was. No reason for him to come over the back on that. 
Well, Kalpik will check back in, and Griffin will go to the bench. There's a runner that comes off, but the rebound's controlled by March. He puts up a long-range jumper from the corner, won't go down. And the rebound is controlled by Trey Freeman for Campbell. Four and a half to go here in the first half. Two-point lead for the Huskies. On the baseline, stolen away by March. He saves it to Hill. Huskies on the run, leave it for Davis. Evans thought about a three. Hill will take one and swishes it. Anthony Hill, his first long distance jumper. He's now got five, or check out eight points in the ball game. Down low, Freeman doubled up, but Evans is going to reach in and pick up the personal. But well, no one for the Huskies slid over that time and stopped that drive. So watch here, you see he'll beat his man. And then, well, now give give Kalpis a little credit right there. He sealed his man off and when you're when you're six foot, well, we'll say nine. I, I would have <laughs> given him about 11, but they have him listed at nine. It's hard to get around that big body, so we'll, we'll give him an assist on that play. Trey Freeman to the line, exactly four minutes to go here in the first half. He will have a pair and hits the first one. Having a great night from the floor and from the line as well. He's three for three now with that free throw. Or check it. I'm sorry, he is. That's his first free throw, so one more to come. Rattles off, won't go down. 35-31, HBU still in the lead. And Marcel Smith back into the ball game. Bembry left side, goes down on the baseline to March. He tries to take it in, and he's going to be pushed by Ryan, who will pick up the personal. May have paid for it a little bit by taking a knee. Yep, see him here either that. Pace with that again, baseline drive. Wow, just tries to do a good job of getting him out of the paint, but no, picks up the foul. So we got a timeout on the floor. HBU clinging to a lead here that they've had most of the first half. Four points right now, 35-31 on FoxSportsHouston.com. Jason. Really, buddy? Wow. Samantha G. Guys, Christmas dinner and you're bringing toys to the table? That's, that's not a toy. Let's eat. Get low prices on the gifts they love. And layaways back so you can pay a little at a time. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Coming into the game tonight, Ron Cottrell wanted to work the boards and keep Campbell from getting those second chance points. They started early with an advantage, but the Huskies have evened that up and the rebounding uh, is just about equal right now. Yeah, not only is the overall rebound, and Campbell has 16, HBU 15, but Campbell only has four offensive rebounds. And that's a huge stat. I know we'll talk about that and have time continue to work on that. And again, I mentioned the bench scoring last time, Lonnie. HBU, 21 points off the bench tonight. Campbell, two. March to the line, and he's one of those contributing to the bench scoring tonight for the Huskies. And gets the first free throw to go. Back out to a five-point lead. Second free throw rattles off, though. Won't go down. Little press that time. Up the floor in a hurry. Ferguson tried to get it to go. He can't, but it's out of bounds, and they're going to say it's off HBU. You hear the fans over there did not like the call. Not one bit, Lonnie. Not one bit. <laughs> But as you said earlier, that rarely changes the officials' call. <laughs> rarely if never. They're not here to make the home team happy. 
Ferguson. Try to feed it in low to Harrison, stolen away by Bimbry. Take away by the Huskies. Davis brings it up, leaves it for Hill, and he'll get it to Smith, who'll back it out on top. They slow it down as we roll down to the three minute mark here in the first half. Smith dribbles across the top, looks for help, finds Davis. They're being very patient. Clock down to 10, though. Bembry puts up the jumper from the wing, won't go. Hill tried to get the board, but had it knocked away. Mark saves it in the corner, down low to Davis. Spin move in the paint, and he gets Ooh. it to go. More hustle points that time for the Huskies. And they've worked it back out to a seven-point lead. Four points for Marcus Davis right now. Down low, White tried to pass it inside to Harris. Knocked away, but back to White. Ferguson oh. on the baseline gets the runner to go. Get a charge right there, and you step up and take that. March in a hurry. Fade away <laughs> off the foot and <laughs> gets it to go down through, and that's 40 now for HBU. Huskies putting some points on the board here in the first half. Freeman blows by Smith and leaves it off the glass for two. Now it's Freeman's 15th point of the game now. 40-35, under two minutes to go now as the Huskies set it up in the half court. Davis looks for March. Left corner back out top to Smith. Bembry high post sets a pick. Smith's going to pop from long distance. Can't get it to go. The rebound control by Campbell. Darren White has it. Picked up by Davis. Goes by him into the paint. Leaves it on the baseline for Harris. Harris double teamed oh. and will have a foul called. And that's going to be called on Marcus Davis. Now that's two on Davis, so now the Huskies have three players with two fouls. Well, that was good. Yeah, HBU's defensive intensity was a little bit higher right now than Campbell's. And Campbell's, again, playing a good ball game, but the, the intensity of the defense of HBU, they're just determined to get this record one-on-one -on -one with Campbell on the season. Marvell Harris at the line. One for two, now one for three. 75 seconds to go here in the first half. Stick with us. Coming up at the half, we'll visit with Brad Hovius, the executive director of the Husky Club. Davis is going to come out. Tyler Russell checks back in for him here for the last minute and 15 seconds. Harris has one more at the line. And it is good. One of two. And it's back down to four. Huskies 40. Camels 36. And Smith dribbles down left side, takes it to the paint, blocked. Knocked away by White. He got up there before it got to the rim. And back come the Campbell. Wide up the floor, off the glass. Oh, wow. They're going to call him player control, and that'll send it back the other way. Wow. Going back to that last block, but we'll, we'll puck this up here for a second. Mm. May have an argument there. A little late slide over, but let's just take advantage of it. Good block that last time. Great defense of, of uh, rotation last time by the Camels. 40 seconds, Hill, long distance. Won't go from the baseline, and the ball bounces around out of bounds. It's going to be Husky basketball, and it will also allow Murphy to check back in. And we're going to get a quick timeout, a 30-second timeout, called by Ron Cottrell. He wants to set up the half-court play here. And uh, with 38-1 left on the game clock, 20 seconds left yeah. on the shot clock, you got opportunity for a good look here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, they've been running that high pick offense all night, and that was the first time Campbell really did a good job of adjusting. They've been getting through the picks okay. But that backside guy came in as a pretty block last time, and we'll see if they make an adjustment to that. Maybe have that backside guy be able to drop it back down 
see what they can do with this. We get 20 seconds, plenty of time to get a great look here. Most important thing is keep the lead going into halftime. No matter what happens down here, have a great defense possession on the other end. Ron Cottrell, the head coach of the Huskies, as we told you, looking for win number 400. This would be a great place and time to get it tonight and would avenge an opening night loss here in the 2011-2012 season for the Huskies if he can pick it up on the home floor here tonight. Four-point lead, about 38 seconds till halftime, and they get the ball inbounds to Smith out top, almost stolen away, but saved by the little point guard. Rex tries to pick. Smith tries to take it inside, dishes back out on top to Russell, won't go, but the rebound oh. is taken by Bembry, and he loses it to Ryan. So Campbell will have one final look here as we roll down to 12 seconds in the first half. Shot clock is off. Leave it out top for Celestine, who's checked back in. Murphy's got it out high, down to three, two, and he loses control, gets a shot off at the buzzer, and it goes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so it looked for all the world like he was out of control and might not be able to even get a shot off, but as it was, he did right at the buzzer and counts and cuts the lead down to two points here at the half. So the team's going to lock a room at halftime with our score. The HBU Huskies 40 and the Campbell Camels 38. We'll take a break and come back with our halftime guest here on FoxSportsHouston.com. Chances are you spent plenty of time dreaming about it. Nothing but carefree days of doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Retirement. You've dreamed about it, but have you planned for it? Don't put it off any longer. Turn to an agent you know from State Farm, the company you trust, to help you with annuities, health insurance, IRAs, and rollovers. Call me, Earl Thompson, today at 281-893-0550. Providing insurance and financial services. LG Smart TV, LG Optimus cell phone, and an apology car. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and it's got apps. Nice. It's got Pandora, Twitter, Facebook. No, honey, not Facebook. Honey, you think my sweater's horrendous? Cats don't skate. I think it kicks butt. Get low prices on the gifts they love, like LG TVs with the latest technology. Now eligible for our Christmas layaway. Save money, live better. Walmart. Hey, sports fans, you've got to get to the Sports House. The Sports House, located at 2738 Gulf Freeway, features over 22,000 square feet of indoor air-conditioned sports fun with state-of-the-art athletic training packed into every inch of the place. Got big dreams? The Sports House offers comprehensive lesson packages and sports clinics for a wide range of sports, including baseball, softball, volleyball, basketball, and football. And if you're looking to fine-tune your game, we offer speed and agility training, too. And every sports house lesson and clinic is overseen by a professional or collegiate athlete. You'll get instruction you can't find anywhere else. And mom and dad, we can host that special party for your young athlete in our party room. Call us today at 281-557-TEAM. The Sports House, again located at 2738 Gulf Freeway. Dream big, play hard, train smart. 281-558-57-TEAM. The Sports House. Remember when I got my first Texans football? <laughs> then, of course, I had to have my own Texans jersey. Well, nothing beats this year when I got my own Texans checking account. Now, it's my turn. I got this one, Dad. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union. Your choice of designs, plus chances to win great prizes, trips, and game day tickets for all Texans checking account holders. You think these make me look... 
holler. Game day every day. Carry the Texans in your wallet exclusively at First Community Credit Union. TexansChecking.com. When it just can't wait, come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting so you don't have to. At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. Halftime here at Sharp Gymnasium on the campus of Houston Baptist University and the Huskies holding on to a two point lead here at the half, 40 to 38. And we are happy to be joined right now as our halftime guest by Brad Hovius, who is the executive director of the Husky Club here at HBU. And Brad, uh, first of all, welcome in here at the half. A pretty exciting first half, and the Huskies are holding their own against this very good Campbell team. Yeah, they're eight and one, and uh, we are. With it, it seems like we've just uh, not taken care of the ball a few times, but we we're hustling. Gosh, we're getting after it, and uh, everybody likes to see people get after it, and we're doing that. Talked a little bit about it in the first half. This would be a great setting for Coach Cottrell to pick up his 400th career win tonight. Yeah, that's a, a quite a milestone, and uh, he he's to be congr congratulated for getting this far. But uh, I'm sure we're going to see 400 before this year is over, and we we look to celebrate it. Yeah, it'll be a great time whenever it comes, and uh, the sooner the better, though, right? Right. I hope it's tonight. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, your history. You know uh, something about milestones in basketball. You have been around have been around the game for a long time, had some uh, athletic directorship stops along the way, uh, maybe most notably for some of the folks around here out at University of El Paso, uh, University of Texas at El Paso, but uh, Del Delta State as well, and also up at Arkansas State. Right. Uh the Delta State uh, was very interesting because I got there right after they had won three national championships in women's basketball. And we played all the big teams, Texas, Tennessee, Old Dominion. We used to play those people uh, head up. And uh, it was uh, quite an experience. And uh, then I went to UTEP and, of course, worked with the legendary Don Haskins. I'd, I'd like to say he worked for me, but I think <laughs> I worked for him uh, more than he worked for me, but you just had to get out of his way. And most, uh, one of the most dynamic and uh, natural coaches. Uh, he did so many things instinctively, and it, uh, he was hard to beat. We, uh, we went to five NCAA championships and uh, one NIT tournament uh, while I was out there. And so it was an awful good run in basketball. And, and I would imagine with Coach Haskins in, in, in those times, and, and maybe not during the time you were there, but in his career, uh, not only a great basketball coach, but uh, really uh, uh, sort of a, a trendsetter for the game as well, as, as a lot of people know now. Yeah, uh, the national championship in 1966, we celebrated that when I was out there, the 25th anniversary of it. And uh, those guys, we took them to two different malls, one on the east side of town, the other the west side of town. I'll bet they must have uh, signed at least 2,500 autographs apiece. Wow. And people had old programs, old pennants, uh, all kind of memorabilia. Uh, it's the biggest thing that's ever happened in, in El Paso, without a doubt. And uh, Coach Haskins was uh, largely responsible for that. Well, in your recent past, you've uh, redirected some of your uh, efforts into uh, the area of fundraising for college programs, recently at Rice and now here at HBU. Talk about how you got involved with the Husky Club and, and what you do now here at the university. I'd be glad to. Uh, I was uh, retired 
and uh, read in the newspaper where they were starting a football program from scratch. And uh, very close friends with uh, Steve Maniachi who uh, helped bring me to Rice and I worked under him uh, at Rice and uh, had a relationship with him. And uh, he's given me a chance to help raise funds to get our football program off the ground. And it's very intriguing to me to watch and see how you just do a football program with all of its aspects to from the ground up. Yeah. I mean, we don't have any uh, we don't have any down and distance markers. You know, <laughs> we got no field, so it's going to be interesting and and uh, so far very enjoyable uh, experiment for me. What kind of a reaction are, are you finding out there among the alumni and among the community at large? The, the alumni have been excited about it, and I think, uh, I think with, with good justification. I, I was just talking with the uh, coach from Campbell, and they, they started football four years ago. They had their first winning season uh, this year, and I said, well, tell me, uh, has it helped at all on, uh, on campus? And he goes, he said, it's been tremendous. He said, uh, they use those football weekends for admissions weekends to invite high school kids uh, onto their uh, campus. So they've had a, a growth spurt because of it. Uh, they have uh, a homecoming celebration that was uh, one of the best they've ever had. Uh, they now seem to have more school spirit and they're getting a lot more exposure in the press. And uh, I, these are just some of the reasons that we would list for adding it. And uh, that exposure, that growth uh, is, is good. But as you know, Houston Baptist University is a, a Christian uh, organization. And uh, we feel like there's going to be a chance for outreach for Jesus Christ as part of our program. And uh, it goes in line with what this institution is all about. So uh, we're, we're excited about all the things that are going to happen. What are some, you, now, uh, for folks who don't know, you've only been on the job for about six weeks, I think you told me. Uh, that's right. And uh, found the, the people here to be genuine and really nice. Uh, I, I should have known, but a tremendous academic programs here. Uh, the pre-law and pre-med and, and nursing schools are all top quality uh, academic pursuits and uh, I, I'm tickled to death to find <laughs> out that, that it's that strong academically. So, so what, uh, what are some of the things that are going to occupy your attention and your focus in the near term? Right now, uh, and the first thing we're doing is, is trying to make that list of people that we could go sit down with and and tell them the story of what we're trying to do what it's going to take to do to get it done and uh ask them to be a part of it through their financial contributions and uh i hate to be crass but it it's not going to happen without without some funding and so uh when you consider uh, uh coaches salaries uniforms uh athletic training staff, uh, the, the whole gamut of what it takes to have a football program, uh, we've got to pay for that. There are just certain things that you have to pay for, and uh, we, we'll be trying to raise funds to get that done. Well, we look forward to kind of keeping up with you every time we come out and then chatting with you and see how the progress is going. We appreciate you stopping by tonight. All right. Well, anytime. Uh, love to tell the story of, of HBU and, and what all we have to offer. We love to hear it as well. That is Brad Hobius, the executive director of the Husky Club, and we thank him for stopping by here at halftime. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll look at some of the first half stats from this one and talk more about it on FoxSportsHouston.com. We just can't wait. Come to Texas Emergency Care Center. We're a licensed, freestanding emergency room open 24 hours a day, every day. Whether it's a broken bone or chest pain, the doctors and staff at Texas Emergency Care Center specialize in emergency medicine. We're ready and waiting so you don't have to. 
At Texas Emergency Care Center, you'll be seen in minutes. We're open 24-7 in Pearland, Cypress, and Atascacita. Find us online at txercare.com. If safety is your goal, Fabenco is your gate. Fabenco, the world's leading manufacturer of self-closing safety gates. Back at Sharp Gym, you see some of the first half highlights of this one in the Huskies of HBU have a two point lead at the half, 40 to 38. And along with Kirk Lowe, I'm Lonnie King. Welcome back in as we get ready for the second half. And Kirk, you looked at the halftime stats and some numbers kind of jump out at you. First of all, the big guys that, that hurt HBU in the opener are at it again tonight. Yeah, Freeman, who had 22 last game, already has 15. Griffin, who had 21, Eric Griffin, is at 10, so both well on their way to the same thing. And I've said this a lot in the first half, I'll say it again. The number that jumps out to me with the two point lead, bench scoring 24 for HBU, only four points for the Camels. So we are ready to go, and the second half is underway. Campbell with the basketball to start the second half as they move left to right here in the road black uniforms with the white noodles and orange trim. HBU in the home white with the blue trim and orange as well. In the paint, out in the corner, they go to White. That was Ferguson who feeds White, and from the baseline, he hits. And just like that, Campbell takes a one-point lead, 41-40 to 40 on the three-pointer. It's been a long time since they've had that lead. Bernardi, Lattice, Davis, along the back line, all three with two fouls, but are back out there to start the second half. Russell in the corner to Smith. Smith for three, and he answers for the Huskies. Marcel Smith with his first three-pointer of the yeah. night. HBU's been shooting 4-12 at the three-point line, so they need to get a little hotter here in the second half. 19 minutes to go. Here's a baseline jumper from Harris, and he tried, it looked like, to draw a foul on Joe Lattice, but he yeah. wasn't biting on it. Well, first of all, he's not going to shoot outside. We've seen that last. I'm going to camp down here, and he got as close as he could, and then he had to shoot over the big fella. Maybe should have pulled up a step sooner. Goes out of bounds, stays in possession of Campbell, and inbounds it comes. Out top, Ferguson finds Freeman, pulls up, pops from 12, and gets it to go. He's just going to get his points. I mean, he gets it any way he wants to so far. 17 on the game for Freeman. Russell blows by Ferguson. Uh, yeah. Out top to Bernardi, back to Russell, and on the baseline gets it to go. Couldn't see on the screen how he got that wide open baseline as Lattice. Lattice just drove his man off that line. Russell, his first points of the ball game here after halftime, 18-13 to go. Two point lead again for the Huskies, 45-43. Freeman tried a fadeaway jumper, won't go, but the rebound controlled by Griffin down in the low blocks and now this time he will draw a foul as he turns around on Lattice. And that's gonna be the third on Big Joe. 
Yeah, that's just good defense by Lattice. But again, all you can do is go straight up. Griffin does a good job of getting inside that big body of Lattice. And as you said, right, that's his third foul. And, you know, you got, you got to play a little bit, though. You need to pull him out right now. I know it's you know, a lot of time left this game. Just under two minutes in here in the second half, Horton and Murphy are going to check in. Harris will go to the bench, as will Rico yeah. Ferguson. Looks like Bimbry may be checking in. I'm going to guess for Lattice, but we'll see. First free throw was good by Griffin. The second one is good as well. Makes them both, and, yep, Lattice is going to have a seat with his third personal foul. So Coach Cottrell decides to save the big fella for a little bit later here. Yeah. He's just not getting a flow tonight. Every time he gets doing something going, he pick up another foul and sit down. So he's just not had a chance. And basketball is so important. Here's a back door pass for Davis, and he slams it home. Forty-seven, forty-five, seventeen and a half minutes to go. Full court pressure. They're broken by Campbell Horton from the wing. Hits a three, and there's the hometown fella coming back to haunt his uh, well, not former team, but a team that's here in the area. Quick miss, and on the run, Griffin takes the alley oop and slams it down. And all of a sudden, the second half's kind of elevated. <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, both teams high flying. Didn't see this in the first half. Davis pulls up, pops on the baseline, and hits. Nice little touch on the 12 footer, and it's back down to one. Bimbry steals it on the up court pass. Back they come. Russell on the run by Freeman. Off glass, won't go, but he's fouled. That's just going to be Freeman's first, though. It was a good foul that time. That slowed some of his momentum down. Both teams, though, had it going there. Watch this on the, yeah, no doubt about it. Freeman wrote him out of bounds that time. You can see how both these teams are coming off 100-plus point performances. Sure. They're <laughs> moving it up and down the floor here to start the second half. Tyler Russell to the line, hits the first free throw, ties it back up. His third point, all three of his points have come since halftime. Davis is going to check out for a minute. Ronald March will check back in for the Huskies. Russell with one more free throw to come. And he can't get it to go down. Rattles around, but we're all tied up at 50. Here's a tip and steal. Bernardi looks for help. Dribbles down on the baseline, goes to Russell, and we've got a blocking foul on Murphy. Well, Murphy got caught a little bit of no man's land right there. And did the only thing he could do is just see right here, kind of who am I going to cover, and just went and, and went high on Marardi and got got the foul call. That's his third for the game. Smith takes the inbounds pass, holds it up out high, finds Russell, who's going to put up a jumper from the wing and gets it to go down through. So now Russell is heating it up. Five points in the second half. And the Huskies back out to their two-point lead they had at halftime. Four minutes in, each team has already put a dozen points on the board here in the second half. Here is a steal by Russell up ahead to Smith. He's all alone and will lay it up and in for two. The other end, Griffin's pleading for the ball down here to get in there. No one's feeding the basketball right now. He's getting frustrated. Now a double team in the backcourt on Freeman, and they break the pressure across the timeline. Murphy from the wing won't go. Rebound is tipped around, yeah. and that's going to be a foul over the back, I think, on Griffin. That's that frustration I'm just talking about. He's trying to get the basketball. He's got a chance for one. There's no way. He's way out of position. We'll see here on the replay. Straight over the back. That was an easy call right there. Again, I go back to that frustration talking about he's having to get the ball. They're not giving it to him, causing that cut that foul right there. Timeout on the floor, and the Huskies have opened up a four point lead 54 to 50. We'll take a break. You're watching all the action of HBU basketball tonight on FoxSportsHouston.com. 
new adventures. It's time to celebrate local flavor in the state's capital. It's time for the Renaissance Austin Hotel, nestled in the beautiful Arboretum. The Renaissance Austin offers a relaxing atmosphere with stunning views of the Texas Hill Country. If it's shopping you're looking for, it's all within walking distance. Go to Marriott.com and discover something wonderfully new at the Renaissance Austin. Fifteen forty-two to go here in the second half. Sharp Jim tonight, and the HBU Huskies in a tough and tight battle with the visitors from Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Campbell, Camels, and here in the second half, Kirk, the Huskies are shooting lights out from the floor, six of seven from the field. Yeah, I missed one shot here in the second half. But Campbell's done, done a great job coming out. Now, they've missed three shots, which is not bad at all either. So, but both teams trying to ratchet up the intensity a little bit here. Both, team, Jim. both teams over 52% now for the game from the field. Very high shooting percentage here. And a lot of that because they're getting good looks at the basket. Here's one for Bembry down low. Yeah, that's a high percentage. That'll keep that percentage up there. And it's out to a six-point lead. Griffin in the paint, in the traffic, can't get it going. Bimbry, the leading rebounder from last year's team, pulls down the board here, up ahead. Hill on a run, can't get the runner to go with the underhand scoop, and Griffin will save the board for Campbell. But there's the double team pressure in the backcourt, and again, that's forcing a little extra thought. Robbie Lang, the head coach in his ninth year at Campbell, wants to call a timeout and talk it over. It's going to be a 30-second timeout, it looks like, for Coach Lang. But uh, I think that he is not happy with uh, the way his team is handling some of the pressure that HBU has extended here in the second half. You're right. As, as you mentioned a second ago, they began to bring the double team. We saw in the first half off the offensive set. Now they're bringing it full court instead of going straight man. They're going to try to do a little bit of running jumping. They've got the guards to handle, I think, but they're just not doing a very good job of handling it right now. Once um, – once Freeman gets rid of the basketball, it just seems like they kind of unravel a little bit. But Freeman can't be a keeper as they're going to double team him. And the other thing I see again is Griffin, that frustration of not feeding him the basketball inside. You know he can score in there. He's just not getting it. That caused him to pick that last foul up. They just need to get back in sync a little bit, get their offense going. I think Cam will be okay. We get all the credit in the world to the Huskies for forcing them in those situations right now. Well, you think the, the, the full court pressure, we're seeing it since we're seeing it every time up the floor now, you yeah. think that's got to be something that the coaches talked about at the half and decided they were going to try to do. Yeah, because the first half they went straight man and just allows Campbell to come up and get their offensive set. Now you're forced to do things they don't want to do, and you see the result right there. Campbell basketball, 14.58 to go here in regulation time, and Horton gets it inbound for the visitors to Freeman. Freeman finds Ryan, and Ryan dribbles out on top. Back to Freeman, cross to Horton. Ryan on the baseline, he finds White, who puts up the shot from the wing and gets it to go down through. Darren White with the bucket, he's got eight now. Here's the answer from Bembry. He tried to take it into the paint and Tomahawk at home, but he's gonna draw a foul and will go to the line. Marvell Harris picks up the personal. Well, Harris, you see, is down the ground. Emory thinks he's got his wide open, but then Harold Sun Harris pops up. Man on man right there. Well, we'll say Bimbry got the best of it because he's on the line right now, but Harris got to feel fairly good that he got that block right back in Bimbry's face. Bimbry's got six. He's picked up a nice little window shot a minute ago, and now his first trip to the line tonight and rattles that one off. One more to come. Yeah, HBU shooting just around 50% from the line tonight. That's not that's not what you want to see as a coach. Bembry uh, not even uh, shooting that well. He is uh, 9 of 16. Well, yeah, he is at 56% for the season. It's 1 of 2 there. Ryan on the baseline. Too strong on the baseline jumper, won't go, but steals the outlet pass. 
Out to Freeman. He comes up short. The rebound taken by Harris. Wow. By Bembry. That answers that last one. Davis is back out on the floor. In the corner to Evans for three. And he hits. What does that pressure be? Now it's out to an eight-point lead. Here's White. He breaks the press on his own and pops from the wing for a bucket to make it 60-54. But in a hurry, Davis on the run came up short and a rebound pulled down by Darren White. Campbell back up the floor. Andrew Ryan is going to draw a foul as he got down low in the double team but extended the play and will go to the line. Yeah, trying to get that block again, going back what they did last time. Bember got the last block, answered his own block. Now, the last shot by, uh, by Campbell was a good job, even though he broke the press by himself. You're still not, though, getting the shots you want to get in your offense, so the Huskies are going to continue that full court pressure. Andrew Ryan to the free throw line, a freshman red shirt, six foot four. Had a career high in the last game. 12 points for Ryan against Methodist, that big 103-55 win. It's one of two from the line there, and it's 60 to 55 with 13-35 to go. Now we see a little bit of a half-court press from Campbell here, but down on the baseline, Davis puts up the runner, won't go. The rebound is put back up by Bimbry. Won't go, but he's fouled. Well, Bimbry's doing a great job on the bench tonight for Lattice. And again, that gives him, he has seven already in the ball game tonight with a chance for nine right here. And another second chance point. Yep. At the line, leading by five. Nice stroke from Bimbry on the first one. Griffin will check back in for Campbell and Harris will go to the bench. One more to come for Bimbry, and it is good. So hits them both and extends the lead back out to seven. 62-55. In a hurry, Campbell up the floor. Ferguson tries to go around Bimbry, and he will hit the deck, and Bimbry will draw the foul. That's just his first, so no trouble there personal foul-wise, and just the third team foul here in the second half. Yeah, you see Bimbry there. He's definitely still moving. Almost started going back a little even too soon on that one, trying to pick, trying to pick up the uh, the charge on that. But again, I'm going to go back. Bembry, nine points of ball game, comes in for Lattice. Did a great job tonight of not only on the on the block shot, the offensive rebounding, like I said, the, the, the point total. He's just a good job off the bench this evening. As we look at, it uh, looks like uh, Bernardi's fixing to come back in the game. We'll see for who, but he's been on the bench for a little while. You don't see him sitting sitting too long. And the first free throw from Ferguson rolls off. Bembry will get the breather. And Lattice, the first one off the bench to congratulate him. Hey, I appreciate you picking me up tonight, young man. Second free throw is good. 62-56. And Evans in the backcourt, both those guys off the bench tonight have contributed big time for the Huskies. Here's March from the wing, and he hits. That's a three, and it's out to a nine-point lead. 65-56 as the Huskies are edging further and further away. 12 and 50 to go here in the second half. Darren White back cross court to Freeman. Back in the man to man half court defense. Ferguson on the baseline finds White. Can't get it to go, but follows his own shot. Tips it up and in for the bucket. You see if Campbell decides to pick the pressure up a little bit more. They're not right now. They think maybe 
Trying to slow HBU down a little bit on their offense, but not the possession. Darren White with that bucket is now up to 12. Three camels in double figures now. Davis with the basketball. Swing it around into the corner to Hill, and we've got a timeout called by Ron Cottrell. As looked like HBU was a little stagnant in the half court there for just a minute, and Ron Cottrell wants to talk it over. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here with 12.04 to go in the second half. Again, one of the larger leads of the game right now for the Huskies. Again, I'm surprised that Campbell didn't try to come out and maybe get a little bit more pressure in the full court setting to try to throw HBU off their offense. Right now, HBU's offense is clicking. They're getting the outside shots, they're getting it inside. You know, just what the Huskies have done, they've kind of taken Campbell out of a little bit of a sink to see if the Camels don't do the same. Well, and I would imagine the one thing you don't want to do after moving the ball quickly up the floor has gotten you to where you are. You don't want to start standing around and bogging right. down on offense. You're right, you don't. I'm sure that's what Coach just said. Hey, we keep this intensity high, keep that tempo up. Still 12 minutes to go here. A seven-point lead for HBU, and they will inbound the ball, March. On the near sideline, gets it in to Bernardi. He spins on the baseline, and he's going to be called for the travel. Well, he pump faked with the body and apparently came up with the pivot foot, and so that will give the ball back over to the Campbell team, and Griffin will get it in to Freeman. Well, now the Huskies take off the pressure, just going straight back to that man-to-man. -man. Tyler Russell picks up Ferguson. Goes out high to White, now to Freeman as they work the weave out top. Goes right side to White, tries to blow by March into the paint. The ball is tipped, and they're going to say it went out of bounds off of Ronald March, and the Huskies don't think so. They think it no. went off the <laughs> knee. And Darren White, we've got a timeout on the floor. 11.38 to go in this one. HBU Huskies holding on to a 65-58 lead, and you're watching it tonight right here on FoxSportsHouston.com. Then, of course, I had to have my own Texans jersey. Well, nothing beats this year when I got my own Texans checking account. Now it's my turn. I got this one, Dad. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union, your choice of designs, plus chances to win great prizes, trips, and game day tickets for all Texans checking account holders. You think these make me look taller? Game day every day. Carry the Texans in your wallet. Exclusively at First Community Credit Union, TexansChecking.com. Big contribution tonight from the Houston Baptist bench, 35 to eight. The HBU guys off the bench have outscored at Campbell. And uh, you look up and down the stat sheet, Kirk, and, and the balance is a lot better. The Huskies have six guys who have scored at least eight points tonight. You're right, both teams are shooting about the same percentage-wise. The offensive points, or excuse me, the, the points off turnovers, 22 though for HBU versus two for the Camels. That's your big difference so far to save them. Baseline out to Campbell, and Freeman will get it in to Griffin. Griffin picked up by Bernardi. They won't let him down in the paint. There's a runner by Freeman, and he loses control and out of bounds. Good defense that time by HBU on that possession, and they get the ball back, leading by seven. Evans still running the point. He's been out there quite a bit tonight in relief of Marcel Smith. Still in control, looks for help. Davis pops out to take it. Down low with the bounce pass into Bernardi. Spins around, had it stripped away by Griffin. Stolen back by Davis. Finds Russell. Russell looks for help, in low to Davis. Turn around with the right hand, off the glass for two. Good find, good patience right there. Didn't get flustered, made the easy pass. On the run in a hurry, Ferguson up to Ryan, back to Ferguson, looks for Griffin from the line. Pulls up, 
And Poffs from just beyond the free throw stripe. Won't go, but gets his own board. Double teamed, and Davis is going to reach up and foul him on the baseline. That's going to be number three on Marcus Davis. Yeah, it was a good, good foul. I mean, a tough foul, obviously, but, you know, both guys going for the basketball. You can't fault Davis on that one a bit. Baseline out, just the fourth team foul. The Huskies got in foul trouble early in the half in the first half. In pretty good shape here. Both teams still under the limit. Five team fouls for Campbell, four for HBU. Freeman around the arc. They try to feed it down low to Griffin, and we've got a whistle as they try to get the entry pass inside to the big fella in the middle. Foul on Bernardi, same foul he had in the first half. Little elbow in the back. Got a little excessive on the push. So now quickly, Davis and Bernardi pick up their third fouls back to back. Davis is going to stay out there, but with three fouls, Lattice is going to check back in, and Bernardi will sit for a little while. Ron Contras kind of got to push in those fouls out. Here's a baseline. Little short range jumper from Griffin and he gets it to go. He's got 16 now. Inside lob to Lattice on the baseline. Puts the shoulder down and had it blocked. And the rebound controlled by the Camels. Ferguson to Freeman. Baseline to Ryan. Ryan a little bit out of control, but Freeman saves it. He pulls up and pops, rolls off, and Lattice pulls down the board. A little, little out of sync, both teams right now as they slow it down, get their rhythm going again. Under 10 minutes to go, 9.39 left here in the second half. Marcel Smith with the scoop shot on the run, won't go. Out of control on that one, and the rebound off to White. Ferguson has it, right wing out top. They spin it around in the corner to Ryan for three, short. And Davis pulls down the board. Outlet to Smith, up ahead to Russell. Jump step down low to Lattice, puts it up, won't go. And he had his rhythm messed up by Freeman yeah, underneath. He sure did. But no call, and back again we go. Ferguson tried to get it down low. Lattice <laughs> was there, and he affected the shot of Darren yeah. White. He got a, we'll call it even now. <laughs> so a couple of quick trips up the floor, and nothing to show for it for either team. And now they'll slow it down and set it up in the half court. Russell with the pick from Mark. Gets it cross court to Smith. There's Baseline, the and there's Lattice. Ooh, he puts up the reversal. Where did that one come from? Could have made the layup, but he went for style points. <laughs> and it's back out to a nine-point lead. Well, sometimes it's not how many, it's how they look. That's right. There is a whistle before the shot as Campbell tried to answer. Marvell Harris is going to check back in for the Camels as Ryan will sit down and Lattice will go to the bench and Bembry will yep. come back in. Again, Bembry did an outstanding job not coming off the, the, uh, the pine this evening for Lattice. Freeman with the basketball gets the pick from Harris. Smith fights through it and stays with him, and they got the tough man-to-man -man in the half court to the Huskies. Down on the baseline, Ferguson tough uses shot. the glass and gets it to go. Uses the body, too, very well that time by Ferguson. Back to a seven-point lead for the Huskies. No one's had a double-digit lead so far. Not nine's been the largest. Smith finds Davis to Russell. Takes it to the baseline, pulls up, has a shot blocked, and Griffin Saves it off of Russell, and so it'll be Campbell basketball after this timeout. We're down to 7.42 to go, and the Huskies trying to hang on here on the home floor to earn the 400th career win for their head coach, Ron Cotter. We'll see how it comes out when we come back right here on FoxSportsHouston.com.
just for these hectic holidays, McDonald's introduces a cup of holiday cheer. It's McCafe's new peppermint mocha and peppermint hot chocolate. Holiday cheer with chocolate on top. <laughs> the simple joy of unwinding. HBU has returned to NCAA Division I Athletics. Come and enjoy the most intimate setting of all of Division I. HBU Athletics is also the most affordable entertainment option in Houston. The HBU Huskies, a member of the Great West Conference, experience success on the field with conference championships in women's soccer, women's golf, and softball. With great recruiting classes in men's and women's basketball and baseball, HBU Athletics is on the move and on the way up. For more information on HBU opportunities in the classroom and on the field, visit us on the web, hbuhuskies.com. Second half from the floor, HBU shooting almost 58%, 11 of 19, and Campbell has cooled off a little bit, down to 9 of 21 for 43%, but down low, Griffin takes this pass and gets it to go, and he is fouled, and we'll see, that may be number four on Lattice. So Marcus Davis, and that is his fourth as well, so neither one of those guys could really afford to pick up a foul, and Davis will have to sit down here for a few minutes. Yeah, that's what Griffin's been trying to do all evening long, just getting that ball inside, he's tough to stop. When he gets in there, as you see now, it's 18 on the game going for 19 leading score tonight for the Camels at the line tonight Griffin is six of seven rattles that one around and it goes down through gets the shooters roll and it's seven of eight Lattice started up the floor. I don't think he ever stepped out before he stepped back in, so there was no whistle by the officials, but Robbie Lang and his staff on the bench wanted a call, but it's Husky basketball. Russell on the dribble, oh. tries to beat Lattice down low, loses his footing, and timeout call. Ron Cottrell trying to make sure that he got that timeout before Lattice got the foul, and little chatter as the teams come off the floor. Yeah, we're going to know what a technical foul looks like on uh, Marvell Harris. Let's see if they, they, they're all getting frustrated. Lattice doing his job of, of, of getting, using his body in the paint. Falls on the floor and, and, and some words were exchanged. Possibly some pleasantries. <laughs> Regardless. What are you doing for Christmas? Yeah, how's the family, et cetera. <laughs> but instead. Well, I think for Harris, the problem was when he looked like he followed Lattice over almost into the HBU huddle. Right. And usually the officials will let some chatter go, but you, you've got to know when to let it go as a player. Oh, yeah. Right, looks like Marshall Smith will be on the line. So now here's an interesting pairing with Davis on the bench with four fouls. Bernard, Bernardi still sitting with three. Right. We've got Bembry and Lattice out there on the floor. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of foul issues right now for Coach Cottrell and staff. That, and Coach <laughs> still discussing the, the technicalities. Well, as a coach, when you, you're in a position here where you've got a lead, not a large lead by any stretch of the imagination, but you've got a lead that you're trying to hold on to, but you're also trying to patch it to the end with a lineup that's riddled with fouls. What kind of a, a struggle is that? It's a, it's a huge struggle. You're right. You've got to, no matter what decision you make, it only looks good if you keep that lead. You, know, you, you do the best you can. You, you, you try to keep the, a young man in the flow of the game. But you know what? With seven away, if you got four, you know you just have to be real estate. I need you at the end of the ball game. I gotta give you a breather. And then that's why you have those guys on the bench do their job. And HBU's had that night. We've talked about that bench scoring all game. Coach Cottrell's bench did a great job tonight, not only keeping in the game but allowing them to have the six-point lead. Marcel Smith gets both free throws on the technical HBU basketball. So now, well, they're gonna bring in 
uh, Kalpich to, to be on, on Lattice's time. And Lattice will be tied up as Kalpich got a hand on the ball, they say. And they were bumping bodies, but the contact was on the basketball. Possession arrow keeps it with the Huskies, though, and they'll bring it in baseline, and March will do the honors. Gets it into Russell on the baseline, and he is fouled and will go to the line. <laughs> that is the seventh team foul on, on Campbell. Ferguson picks up the personal, and so it's bonus situation for Tyler Russell. Well, Coach Lyon is, is, is imploring his guys, you need a front, you need a front to deny the basketball. And once he got the ball, that pick up that cheap foul. And he said one and one here, and yeah, the last thing you want to do is give them, give them cheap points here, give them free buckets. Getting seven-point lead now for the Huskies. And Russell hits the first one from the line this year. He is 14 of 15, and now fit, uh, 16 of 17. So that's money in the bank. Absolutely. Out to an eight-point lead with seven minutes to go in this one in the Huskies. Bring Bernardi back in, so he joins Lattice, March, Russell, and Smith. And there's almost a steal by March. Got a finger on it. Read the passing lane real well, but could not control it, and it will go out of bounds. Yeah, I've been real impressed tonight by, uh, by March. He's got some points, got over about 12 points around the game. But he's long-armed. He does a good job on the offensive rebound, and you saw it in another little tip there. And we've got a timeout called by the Huskies, a 30-second timeout. So they want to talk it over real quick, set up their defense this time. And now this is to the point in the game where if you're Coach Cottrell, you, you've got to start thinking about as much keeping them off the scoreboard as getting yourself onto the scoreboard. Right, you're right. Take, take a little bit of time off the clock as best you can, of course, with, with the shot clock. But um, you're right, make the most of every possession, not be in any kind of a hurry. You know, you got a fast break button, go get it. But other than that, you have to bring it up, set it up, run your offense, run that 20, 25 seconds a little bit, get you that good shot. Huskies after this one have a very tough one against a team in the top 25 going up to Creighton to play them this Saturday. And that will be a very interesting contest and challenge for Coach Cottrell and his team. Good defense, good trap and rotation that time of the Huskies. Double team on the ball, and Calpic looks for help, gets it out top. Half court pressure on the ball, and there is a shot right. clock violation. Yeah, solid defense ever by the Huskies right there. They came out, they started to trap, great rotation. Every person that touched the ball for the Camels would get doubled. And Coach Lair over there, he's fr like frustrated. What, what else can we do? Husky basketball, they've got a chance to extend it out to a double-digit lead here on this possession. Jonathan Evans, who checked back in during the timeout, gets it to Bernardi, to Russell. He puts it up and gets it to go for two, and it's out to 10. 75-65 with six minutes to go. Freeman finds White to Ferguson. Back to Freeman, pops from just beyond the line and gets. Well, that's it. the guy you want to give it to. If you need to get, get something going again, you got to start with Freeman. 19 on the game. He and Griffin both with 19. Eight-point lead again for HBU. Bernardi on the dribble. Gets a pick from March into the paint. Has it stripped away, and there's going to be a foul. It's going to be called on Freeman as he reached in. Got the ball, but got Bernardi in the process. And to the line, Art Bernardi with a chance to extend this back out again. It's only Freeman's second foul, so he's, so you won't see him come off the court. And if you're Ron Cottrell, how long do you go? He's got Lattice and Bernardi back out there. How, how long before you get Davis back out on the floor? Yeah, you're right. I, I'm thinking he's going to give Lattice a break here in a second just because he's, he's his body's so big. He needs to get a little breather out here anyway to finish the game strong. 
And Artie misses the front end of the one and one though. And so looks like Bembry was ready right. to check in, but he won't be able to until the play stops. Freeman brings it up. Goes right wing to Ryan, who's got it out top, marked by Bernardi. They go back to the tough man-to-man. -to -man. In low, they go to Griffin, and Lattice yep. is going to pick up the foul. Yeah, and for Joe Lattice, that'll be number four. Yeah, couldn't quite get him out of the game. I'm assuming Bimber is coming in for him anyway. Lattice, you see, talking to the official down well, there in the lower part of the screen. Well, again, Griffin does a good job using his body. Saw on the replay that time. And once you get Lattice down low, getting so big, all you have to do is go into his body, and they're going to call that foul. We've seen that more than once tonight. Griffin to the line to shoot a pair and misses the first one. Lattice will sit down. Bembry will now check in. How much of that last foul on Lattice do you think was maybe – the fact that he was a little bit fatigued coming oh, yeah. that trip up the floor. There's no doubt. He, he tried to lean on him, trying to get a little bit of a breather. And again, Griffin does a good job of using the body. I think we'll see Lattice the bench for about, I'll get about two and a half minutes, get him right back in the game, try to finish this thing out. Griffin gets it to go the second time through, and 75-68 is the score. Down under five minutes left in this one. And HBU holding on to a seven-point lead. Here's a pass. Russell almost lost it, and Bembry comes to visit. All right. And I had Jelani. I'm telling you right now, I had you right there. <laughs> uh, who had you? No, I was going to have to take it, I guess. <laughs> Way to go. Way to take one for the team, yes, partner. Sir. Yes, sir. Freeman inbounds the ball. We're none the worse for wear. We <laughs> know all the folks were concerned about us. <laughs> Here's his wow, good block. runner on the baseline. White can't get it to go, and Bembry did get a hand on it. And it's going to be out of bounds off of Darren White. And so HBU again with strong defense. Yeah, Robbie well, Lang is just beside himself yes. over there on the bench. <laughs> Here's a steal by Ferguson. One on two and knocked away by Evans. Nice job to get back. But they're going to call him for a foul. They say he reached in wow. and got the arm. Yeah, that, that's a tough call right there. He's so far away. And you see here the nice strip. Well, regardless, it, it is the foul. And still still shooting the one and one. No, it's not, that, 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 was, that was a shooting foul there. But the next foul will be the two-shot foul. The rest of the ball game. And the free throw shooting is not been what you want to see because Coach Lang this evening. Yeah, they were 4 of 10 at the line. Uh, I'm sorry, 12 of 20 at the line tonight. So just 60%. Yeah. Ferguson misses the first one there. So that percentage will drop a little bit. One yeah. more to come. You want to be at that 70% mark if you can. Second one is good, so one of two. And it's down to a six-point game, 75-69. As we close in on the four-minute mark, Marcel Smith working the point, leaves it for Bernardi out high. Back to Smith, and I try to backdoor bounce pass to Bernardi, but stolen away by Griffin. Good defensive work that time by the big man for Campbell. Let's see if they go back to the side of Griffin. There he is. Freeman and Ryan almost walked. They're going to say that the ball was tipped. Oh. Jumper won't go, and Bernardi pulls down the board for the Huskies. Get it to HBU tonight. They are keeping the second chance points to a minimum for Campbell. Now oh. Bernardi is called for the walk as he tried to back it down. <laughs> Wow, that was a tough call. That made a nice spin move right there. there. Must have drugged that, drugged that outside foot a little bit. Well, there's a timeout on the floor with 3.36 left in this ball game. And HBU clinging to a six-point lead. We'll take a break and come back and see how this one winds up on FoxSportsHouston.com.
with your toys after dinner. That's beautiful. Mason. Really, buddy? Wow. Samantha G. Guys, Christmas dinner and you're bringing toys to the table? That's, that's not a toy. Let's eat. Get low prices on the gifts they love. And layaways back so you can pay a little at a time. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Thirty-six to go in this one. Talked about it a minute ago, but Kirk, you pointed out again during the timeout. Good balance up and down the score sheet for the Huskies tonight. Got seven guys between eight to twelve points, leading score down to eight. Whereas Campbell, two guys, twenty and nineteen apiece. That's the guy you stopped them. There's too many more weapons for the Huskies tonight. Ferguson in the paint, tried to pass it to Freeman, stolen away by the Huskies. Hill to Davis, who's checked back in during the timeout, and he leaves it out top for Marcel Smith. Bernardi pops out high, gets it to Davis. Davis holds it up, and we've yeah. got a foul. moving screen that time by Bembry. His second personal foul, and that is number 10 now. Of course, not going to shoot here, offensive foul. But more importantly, Campbell gets the basketball back. 3.14 to go, trailing by six. The Camels will give it to Andrew Ryan to inbound, and we're going to see full court pressure. And Griffin comes up to help him break it, and he will dribble into the front court. Get out of the corner, he does. Last thing you want to do is throw that ball down that corner. Wide open three, and Bernardi pops out on him. Out to Murphy, who's checked in. Down low to Griffin, and he backs down on Bembry, and Bembry's going to be called for the foul. Shot doesn't go, but Griffin will have a pair at the line. And you hear the fans here at Sharp Gym. Wow. They wanted player control called on that. Yeah, Griffin came in there, elbow up, dipped that shoulder in that, in, right in Bembry's face, and Bembry just... Just stood there. Ron Cottrell wants an explanation as well. And he would get. Uh, he got an explanation line, but I don't think he agrees. <laughs> he wants another explanation. <laughs> yeah, he wants a different explanation. Guy's going for 400 wins. He knows what he's doing out there, too. Believe me. That's a tough call right there. And again, Griffin on the line here. Chance to add to his point total this evening and to bring him within four. 2.53 to go in this one, and Griffin trying to cut into the six-point lead. Too strong. They're in the double bonus from here on in, and so one more to come. Ryan will check out. Ferguson checks back in for Campbell. Well, the, the, the Campbell free throw percentage has been low in the low 60s, but Griffin was eight, it's been eight for 10 up to that point, so. A little surprising on that shot. Gets a second one. So now nine of 12, 75% for the big fella who's leading them in scoring with 21 points tonight. Bernardi back to Smith. They almost trip over each other. Smith saves it out to Bernardi. Two and a half to go in this one. Shot clock down to 15 seconds. Set up that high pick again. Smith will pop from three-point land. Davis grabs a board, a fresh clock, and they'll send it back outside. Wow. But there's a foul on Rico Ferguson. Well, I think Davis might have got away with a little bit of a push right there to get that rebound. And then the retaliation foul is the one that gets caught. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit of push there. And then he said, this little frustration there. And Still the one on one. Davis misses the front end, and so the rebound pulled down 
by Darren White for Campbell. Full court pressure off the missed shot, though, and double teaming the ball, but they break the press. Ryan open for three, too strong, and Bembry with the board. We'll roll down to the two-minute mark and a five-point lead for HBU. They've got the basketball as well. Davis dribbles down, pulls up, pops on the baseline. Good shot. Absolutely. Wanted to, wanted to push off. Ryan did. Not going to get it. White tries to answer. Rattles it out. Won't go. And Davis with the board. Now HBU can milk a little of this clock up by seven. Smith will hold it up out top. Picked up by Freeman. Gets a screen from Bernardi, and we've got a whistle. Freeman tried to fight through the pick and reached around. That's going to be a two-shot foul. You see HBU set up. Like a little bit of a high delay game. You're going to have two guys at both elbows. going to go off the pick, dribble back around. The top guy's going to pop. But what we're going to see is they got the quick foul, and rightfully so. Marcel Smith to the line. 90 seconds exactly in this one, and he hits the first one. Big free throws. Both teams will be in the double bonus from here on in. Very similar score to the last time these two teams met, except Campbell had 82 and HBU had 68. Both free throws good for Marcel Smith. Big free throws, and now Campbell with the basketball facing the full court pressure again. Freeman brings it across. It's a back out to Griffin. Look for a three, instead has to dish it off to White, and there's going to be a blocking foul, and that ooh, might be on Davis. If that is, that's his fifth. He's done. Yeah, he's done. It's a two-shot foul. Let's see here. <laughs> well, I mean, there's contact. Just like there's contact every play. He, he definitely didn't reach with his hands, but again, good, good hand for Davis and well-deserved. Finishes the night with 12 points and five personal fouls. Russell will check back in, but we've got a timeout on the floor with 75 seconds left to go in this one. So hang on to your hats, folks. Huskies trying to pull out a win on the home floor on FoxSportsHouston.com. Think Coach Langs will be telling us guys after the free throw, we've got to start putting some full court pressure here. You can't just sit back and, and, and let them get set. You know you're going to foul. It's two shot foul every time, but you need to get some pressure back here to get some easy turnover, get an easy bucket. To the line for Campbell is Darren White, and he hits the first free throw 79 71 now. Campbell within eight. Camels, as we told you, out to an eight and one start. One of those wins already opened the season for HBU. Both free throws good for Darren White, and it's down to seven with 75 seconds to go. Bernardi looking for help, and he's got to call timeout to avoid the five second call on the baseline. And so the Huskies now one thing you don't want to do if you're Ron Cottrell's team is get a little bit lackadaisical here. No, well, like I said, it's obviously they're going to come out in full court pressure. You know that coming in. That shouldn't have surprised anybody. But you're right. You've, you've got to make smart passes here, smart decisions. And I'm sure he's also thinking we've got to get the right free throw shooters on the floor because right now we're up seven. They're going to foul. And even with the shot clock, you're going to run a couple of times off. That's the ball game. They're going to foul soon. Get those right guys in there right now. 
Marcus Davis has fouled out. Joe Lattice is on the bench right now. He just has not been able to get into the flow of the game tonight. Yeah. Bernardi and Bembry are out there, the big fellows for HBU, and they're joined by Hill, Smith, and Russell. And you got to figure they want the ball in one of those three hands. They get it to Smith. Fights through traffic, and he's going to be fouled. I think Freeman reached in and picked up the personal, and that will be his fourth. Yeah, that's, you, de you definitely don't want to have him fouled out, so you got to think now we're thinking offensive, defensive possessions, if at all possible. And if you're HBU, you make sure you get it on his, or into the hands of the man that he's guarding. Absolutely, you do. Smith hits the first free throw. So far this year from the free throw line, 12 of 13 coming into this game. Hits them both there, critical free throws by both Smith and Russell here late in the game. Two very good free throw shooters. Here's Ryan from the baseline, rattles out a three, and Bimbry pulls down the board. We'll roll under a minute to go, and Smith again weaves his way through traffic. Down low and back out top the hill. He'll hold it up, and he's fouled by Murphy. Got a lot of time on off that clock right there in between possession and the foul. You see right there, Freeman's not going to pick that, four, that fifth up. Now, of course, you're the point of the game. Well, you may just have to pick that fifth though if you stay in the game. Anthony Hill at the line hits the first free throw. One more to come. I think I know the answer to this, Kirk, but uh, where do you think uh, Ron Cottrell is right now as far as that 400th win? He's probably still immersed in this ball yeah. game. Believe me, he's not even thinking about it right now. He's trying to get the win, then he'll go. There you go. It's almost a steal. Smith with a hustle. He's going to tie up Ryan. Great hustle. Possession belongs to Campbell. They will keep it with 43.4 left on the clock. Yeah, watch Smith here. Smith has no chance to ball. He just flat out hustles. Get that jump. Great play by Marcel Smith. You know what? I think right now that 400 wins, those players might know about it, and they want to give it to their coach tonight. You see a hustle play like that. It's not just about them. It's for their, it's for their leader right here. 83-72, an 11-point lead with 43 seconds to go. Possession arrow gives it to Campbell, and they will inbound the ball and bring it all the way up the floor. And Russell tried to reach in and steal it. Darren White's going to be fouled by Bembry. Foul was before the shot, but now we've gone under 35 seconds to go, so there will be no lead. more shot clock. No more shot clock, 11 point lead, biggest lead of the game. It's going to be a free throw contest from here on out, at least for the Husky side of it. Bembry picks up his fourth personal. Looks like Evans is going to check back in. He's a ball handling specialist, so they want as many ball handlers out there as possible. Eighty-three, seventy-three. Now it's a free throw from Darren White. Cuts it back down to ten, and it rolls out. Won't go, and Hill pulls down the board. He'll hurry it up the floor. Gets it to Bernardi, and he will slam it home for the exclamation point. And it looks like Ron Cottrell is going to have his four hundredth career win. Jumper is short from Freeman and now a foul will stop it with 20 seconds to go and some of the fans here at Sharp Gym <laughs> are ready to honor that man right there oh yeah believe me again he's still not thinking about it 21 <laughs> seconds left are you kidding me Look, he's, he's, as, he's as focused right now as he's been all game long You've been coaching that long, right? You know, anything can happen. I don't care, 20 seconds or not 20 seconds. 
85-73, and Tyler Russell will go to the line here with a chance to extend the lead. And he will by one there. Yeah, Cal Pick will check back in. One of the biggest differences tonight, we've said before, the, the second chance points for Campbell that were there the first game, that led to that first victory, just weren't there tonight. Huskies flat out hustled the Campbells. Hits them both, does Tyler Russell, and now token pressure, and they let White bring it up. He'll pop from three and hits. And that will cut it back down to 11, but the clock is an ally of the Huskies, and they will bring it up across the timeline, and this clock will wind down. And the they will pick up win number four of the season. A 400 of a career for Ron Cottrell. And the final score tonight is HBU 87, Campbell 76. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we will visit with the winning head coach. We will celebrate a milestone on FoxSportsHouston.com. Chances are you spent plenty of time dreaming about it. Nothing but carefree days of doing whatever you want, whenever you want. Retirement. You've dreamed about it, but have you planned for it? Don't put it off any longer. Turn to an agent you know from State Farm, the company you trust, to help you with annuities, health insurance, IRAs, and rollovers. Call me, Earl Thompson, today at 281-893-0550, providing insurance and financial services. HBU has returned to NCAA Division I Athletics. Come and enjoy the most intimate setting of all of Division I. HBU Athletics is also the most affordable entertainment option in Houston. The HBU Huskies, remember the Great West Conference, experience success on the field with conference championships in women's soccer, women's golf, and softball. With great recruiting classes in men's and women's basketball and baseball, HBU Athletics is on the move and on the way up. For more information on HBU opportunities in the classroom and on the field, visit us on the web, hbuhuskies.com. Hey, sports fans, you've got to get to the Sports House. The Sports House, located at 2738 Gulf Freeway, features over 22,000 square feet of indoor air-conditioned sports fun with state-of-the-art athletic training packed into every inch of the place. Got big dreams? The Sports House offers comprehensive lesson packages and sports clinics for a wide range of sports, including baseball, softball, volleyball, basketball, and football. And if you're looking to fine-tune your game, we offer speed and agility training, too. And every sports house lesson and clinic is overseen by a professional or collegiate athlete. You'll get instruction you can't find anywhere else. And mom and dad, we can host that special party for your young athlete in our party room. Call us today at 281-557-TEAM. The Sports House, again, located at 2738 Gulf Freeway. Dream big, play hard, train smart. 281-558-517-TEAM. The Sports House. An LG Smart TV, LG Optimus cell phone, and an apology car. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and it's got apps. Nice. Got Pandora, Twitter, Facebook. No, honey, not Facebook. Honey, you think my sweater's horrendous? Cats don't skate. I think it kicks butt. Get low prices on the gifts they love, like LG TVs with the latest technology. Now eligible for our Christmas layaway. Save money, live better. Walmart. Now boarding group four to Barbados. Babe, no cell phones on the honeymoon. Oh, just check this text. Oh, no. What's the matter? McRib is back. I'm going to miss it. I married a 14-year-old. McRib's saucy goodness is back for a limited time. The simple joy of big news.
just for these hectic holidays, McDonald's introduces a cup of holiday cheer. It's McCafe's new peppermint mocha and peppermint hot chocolate. Holiday cheer with chocolate on top. <laughs> the simple joy of unwinding. Again to Sharp Jim on the campus of HBU, and we're joined now by the head coach of the Huskies, Ron Cottrell stops by and coach. A very special win tonight for you, number 400 in your career. 21 years, 400 wins. How significant is that milestone for you? Well, I don't know how significant it is for me. I think it's significant for our program. Uh, we've done a great job of bringing in quality young men, I believe, over the years who represented our university in a really good way. And uh, they've done all the work. We're just happy to go along for the ride with those guys. My assistants have brought in tremendous players and have really done a great job of coaching them up. And I'm just here trying to keep things on the right track. Uh, but it's, it's a fun ride right now. But 21 years, 400 wins, that's almost 20 a season. That's, that's a pretty good number and a sign that you've had some success along the way. Yeah, I mean, we, we've been very fortunate. We've got administration that really supports us. And a, and a fan base that really is excited about what we're doing. And we're just trying to every day get better. And this is a young group, and they're getting better a little bit at a time. Well, and this one tonight's got to be a little bit special for you. We talked before the game. This was a good team you played tonight, coming in 8-1 and one on the season, had beaten you earlier, and your team played very well tonight. Yeah, I thought we did a good job on the defensive end. We forced a lot of turnovers and converted those into points, and that was big for us. And then we controlled the glass a little bit. It was important for us to make sure that they were not getting a lot of offensive rebounds and putbacks, and they, and they were doing that some early, and we were able to contain them later on in the game. And you really got big contribution from your bench tonight. Yeah, we got big contribution from everybody that stepped on the court for us tonight. Even Terry Bembry didn't score a ton of points, but he got a lot of rebounds. And everybody that stepped on the floor gave us something positive tonight. Well, we're going to talk a little bit to one of the guys who had a hand in that as well. And uh, congratulations again on the big win tonight. Great. For you. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Ron Cottrell, the head coach of the Huskies. Now let's chat with one of the guys, Marcus Davis, who had a big game tonight. Marcus, first of all, for your coach tonight, you guys picked up win number 400 for him. Talk a little bit about what that means to the team to help the coach reach that milestone here tonight. I think that means a lot for the team, especially giving us confidence. And coach always came out. He always, he always prepared us for every game. Even though we may not have won all of our games, he's always been the one that's prepared us. He's always been the one that's encouraged us through all the good times and through all the bad times. So I'm glad that we got the win for the coach. You guys tonight, uh, went at them. They got up on you when you went out there to start the season. You guys took a lead early and you managed to hang on even when they came back and, and closed the gap a lot of times tonight. Yeah, we did. We remembered that game, the first, our first game. We had jitters. We didn't know what we were doing out there at first. And now we had enough experience now to come out there to withstand their runs and to just capitalize on our mistakes and their mistakes as well. You fouled out at the end, but you were one of six players in double figures tonight, 12 points tonight. You guys spread it around as well. Yeah, we did. We did. We, we really worked as a team this game. Like I would say, the other game, we didn't really know what we were doing, so we would just go through one guy maybe. And so this game, we all knew what we were doing, and we all chipped in. Now, Coach talked about you being a young team and, and trying to still find out how to play together. How do you think you're progressing as a team? I think we're progressing really well. Although there, will, there is bumps in the road, we're getting over those and we're surpassing all of that stuff. So we're progressing really well. Congratulations on the big win tonight. Appreciate that. Marcus Davis, who joins us here following his 12-point performance tonight for the HBU Huskies in their win, 87-76. to We'll take a break, come back, look at some of the final numbers, and say so long here from Sharp Jim on FoxSportsHouston.com. It's time to seek new adventures. It's time to celebrate local flavor in the state's capital. It's time for the Renaissance Austin Hotel. Nestled in the beautiful Arboretum, the Renaissance Austin offers a relaxing atmosphere with stunning views of the Texas Hill Country. If it's shopping you're looking for, it's all within walking distance. Go to Marriott.com and discover something wonderfully new at the Renaissance Austin. Okay, do you see my location on your phone, son? Yeah. Uh, your old man's kind of in a jam. Yeah, yeah. 
I owe you big time. Yeah, you do. By the way, don't tell your mom. Oh, we'll see. Okay, now look up. <laughs> Ted, how did you even get... Son? No, 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 no. Get the latest 4G phones with family tracking apps for Christmas, starting at $28.88. Save money, live better. Walmart. I wanted something my whole family could enjoy. Danny loves basketball. Willie wants the batting cages. My husband's into football, and I'm training for a marathon. Then we found the sports house, and now I'm one happy mom. With single and family options available, we found the membership just right for us. The sports house offers a range of activities with group and private lessons overseen by pro and collegiate athletes. The sports house even has a party room and offers an additional 25% off on Sundays. Check them out at thesportshouse.net. Dream big, play hard, train smart. Back at Sharp, Jim, Lonnie King along with Kirk Lowe, and it's been a very good night here for the home team, the HBU Huskies. And, Kirk, uh, uh, it's, it's always special to come up with a win on the home floor, but uh, this is a milestone win, and it's nice to get those kind of wins at, at home. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 400. I mean, that, that's an incredible number right there. Um, you, you take it anywhere you can get it, but you're right. It's so much sweeter here in front of your home fans. Uh, and, and with this team who's been struggling a little bit, to get a big win like that is just huge, right, for Coach uh, Cottrell Suskies. And, and as we talked with the coach about, it's not like 400 wins in 40 years. Okay. Uh, at 21 years, that means he's been averaging about 20 wins a season. Success along the way. You're right, and that's no doubt. That's why the Huskies are on their way, not only up in the conference during now in Division One, but moving to the Southland Conference here in a couple of years, all attributed to Coach Cotsch on what he's done. Well, let's talk about some of the details of this one tonight that got him to that 400th win. Uh, you and I both talked about it. That the bench was huge tonight, and they spread it around very well. Yeah, you had seven players within four to five points of each other. Uh, that's an incredible number, and as well as the bench points, almost a 30-point difference while between uh, what the Huskies did and what Campbell did. No doubt about it. That's the difference. Also, points off turnovers. A lot of points off turnovers for the Huskies tonight, early and the second half, and they just rolled this game. You know, it was a great revenge game for that, for that week one. And the points off turnovers is critical because not only do you have to score, but you're creating scoring opportunities by good defense. Yeah, you create opportunities by not allowing them to score. So you can take that all day long. And uh, no doubt, 11 point win tonight, that's a big key this evening. So the Huskies come away with their fourth win of the season. They go to four and six. Campbell off to an eight and one start, starts a five game road trip with the loss, and they will go to oh and two or eight and two on the young season. Uh, Creighton up next for the Huskies as they go on the road uh, still before Christmas and then come back on the 21st to play Santa Clara here before a little bit of a break around the Christmas holiday. And then they'll get back to it for the 2012 part of the schedule. But tonight a big win, 87-76 for HBU as they deliver win number 400 to their head coach, Ron Cottrell. And for Kirk Lowe, I'm Lonnie King. We thank you and as we send you out tonight, let's look at some of the highlights of this one. We'll see you down the road on FoxSportsHouston.com.